Hey, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's not gonna be a fishing video. Uh, I'm gonna talk about my live scope setup. There's not too many videos out there that I've seen of people, you know, talking about their setup. This is not gonna be a video of how I put it together because I think there's way better videos out there for that. Jason Young from Garmin Live Scope Addicts has a good video of him putting it together. And then Jay Siemens video is pretty good too. He doesn't really go through the building of the shuttle. He wires it up and goes through all these other things. I'm just gonna be going through like a summary of what my setup is versus how I put it together. Now, first off, this is the, uh, this is my live scope setup. This isn't the uh, retail Garmin bag or Garmin anything. Other than the unit, everything else is third party. Why Why did I decide to go third party? Because, man, I was looking at the, uh, the Garmin pole I mean, I'm sure it works fine, but as I, I was, as I was doing research, I like the Summit pole here a lot better. I'll go into that a little bit more later. But I'm gonna start with the bag. This is the Summit large bag. Originally, when I first started looking for this stuff, uh, they only had one bag. It was just called the Summit bag. And now they got two different bags. The old bag is what they call the extra large bag. And this is the large bag. Even though this thing looks huge, like with it right here next to me, the original bag is even bigger. So this bag is more for like your seven to nine inch screens. This is the Echo Map UHD 73 SV. UHD is like their newest line in the Echo in the Echo Map series. UHD, I think it's supposed to stand for Ultra HD, which is kind of I don't know misleading because UHD is kind of like a TV thing. UHD is what they call 4K TVs because you got QHD, which is 1440p, FHD is 1080p, and so on and so forth. So I think it's kind of a naming gimmick with the UHD thing. What the UHD means for this unit is not the display, but their their latest transducer, I think it's called the, the UHD transducer. They got the GT54, which came out last year, I think, or two years ago, it's 2021 now, hard to believe. And then they just came out with the UHD like GT56. It's supposed to have higher fidelity with the sonar, not with the screen. Uh, I think the screen's only like 800 by 400 or something. So another thing that people talk about with the with LiveScope is the bigger the screen, the better. I mean, of course, having a bigger screen would be better. There was just some things I had to consider like portability, battery draw, because the bigger the screen, the more space it's gonna take up and the more the more battery it's gonna it's gonna draw. And I do have a uh, 30 amp hour amped outdoors lithium battery in here. It's probably a little overkill because I I originally started out with this uh, this Amazon cheap battery. It was like a 16 amp hour. It was like 50 bucks at the time. And I just I was just thinking, you know what? 50 bucks, even if it's not that great of a battery and works okay, I should be alright. But then uh, I started thinking like, well, I take these camping trips. I'll go out of town for a weekend. And I actually camped out on the ice, uh, what was it, this past weekend. This thing lasted me all night. So far, I have not run it down all the way. Uh, when I first got the battery, charged it up, took it out three days in a row, did not charge it in between those days, and it still, you know, it still didn't die on me. Yeah, the battery, the battery's been treating me good. You know, there's other brands you could buy, Dakota Lithium, Amped. I don't think you could go wrong with any of those two batteries. I think Markham and Vexilar just started coming out with lithium batteries. Those are probably okay. You'll just need something a little bit bigger because with the screen, there's this uh, live scope box, which is called the GLS-10. That needs to be powered too. And the GLS-10 is kind of like the brains for the live scope. I, I'll kind of talk about how the live scope works in a little bit, but uh, I'll just take this thing apart so you guys can see the shuttle. Okay, I got the shuttle out of the bag. It was kind of, a, it was kind of tight, even though this bag is pretty dang huge. Uh, but I'm gonna talk about the shuttle a little bit. This is the Summit shuttle. All the accessories I have is Summit. Uh, I just decided I should just, you know, pick pick one vendor or, or third party and just go with it. It's, it's 3D printed, seems pretty sturdy. Everything's pretty strong. The only gripe I have about it is the instructions that came with it because it didn't come assembled and the instructions are kind of, ugh. I mean, maybe I'm just not the smartest guy on earth to figure it out. The, the instructions left a lot to be desired and that's where Jason Young's video came came into play. So I kind of just ignored the instructions. I mean, I had, them, I had them set to the side just in case. I just followed Jason Young's video and he walked you right through it how to put the shuttle together. It's kind of tricky. 
Uh, I'm not that crafty or whatever, so I can't just look at it and like, okay, this is what I need to do, put it together, things like that. I think it's a pretty, pretty good shuttle. I mean, it's the only experience I've had with any, any Garmin shuttles, but so far so good. Then I'll turn it around here for you guys to see. So this is the GLS-10. It's, it's like the brains behind the live scope. Everything is kind of like feeds through this as far as live scope is concerned. So the transducer, here I'll pull it out for you guys real quick. The summit pole, sorry my bag's still attached to it. So the summit pole, the reason why I went with the summit pole is because it telescopes. Let's see here. See, it gets shorter and longer. And the Garmin pole, the thing with the Garmin pole is it doesn't telescope, it comes in sections. If you're fishing uh, thicker ice, then you gotta add a section, or I guess if you go into thinner ice, you can take a section off. It just seems like a little bit cumbersome. I know you can just telescope this and then just leave it at whatever length that you need until you know you do find thicker ice, because you're not gonna be, I don't think you'll be shortening and lengthening it that often, but it just makes it easier. So yeah, anyways, the transducer, hold on, let me take this cover off. Uh, real quick about the cover, there's also a Summit transducer cover for the LVS32. I think that's what the LiveScope transducer is called. Some people are like, what do you need a cover? What's the cover for? What's to protect the transducer? It's an expensive piece of equipment, so I don't know, $50 accessory to protect your, I don't even know how much this thing costs. I'm gonna have to look it up, put it up here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be some crazy number though, like in the hundreds. 50 piece of uh, equipment gives me state of mind. And that's what I'll do. I know some guys just have their uh, transducers in their boat on a pole, so they don't gotta worry about it banging up on anything. But with ice fishing, it's in the sled. Things are banging around and uh, yeah, you don't wanna scratch. And as I say that, you don't wanna scratch the bottom of this transducer here. So that could mess with your clarity, your picture. And uh, the transducer, if you didn't know, uh, it's basically three transducers in one. So it's kind of hard to explain. So, you know, each each transducer is shooting out at a certain angle. And what the GLS-10 does, you know, this black, big old black thing back here, is it stitches those images together and then throws it out to your display. So instead of seeing, you know, three different images, you're seeing one big one. I mean, you can kind of see the seams, but it does a pretty good job of stitching it together. So the thing with the um, GLS-10 is that either the GLS-10 or the transducer, it'll draw power from the battery, even if the unit is off. And that's why even Garmin themselves recommend you having a switch. If I want to power it off, I'll just power off the unit here. Try to do it blind. And then there's a switch that everything's tied to. Wiring the switch was pretty tricky for me. Uh, I had to rack my brain for a couple hours before I figured it out. And the reason why it was so confusing for me is the, my battery goes to my switch and then from the switch goes to the harness. There, there's this harness you can buy for the Garmin units and it has power for your unit, then power for this because they both have to be powered separately. And what the harness does is kind of, it kind of ties all that together and going from the switch to the harness to this, the GLS-10 to the head unit was was super confusing for me. Um, I had to rewatch Jason's video like over and over before I figured it out. Uh, yeah, if you guys wanna know how to wire this thing and put it all together, I would strongly suggest checking out Jason's video because he can explain it way better than me. I don't know jack about electronics or anything like that. I'm trying to think of what else. What else am I forgetting? Oh yeah, the pole. Back to the pole. And I'll keep jumping back and forth because I have not written anything down. There's no script. I'm kind of just winging it. This is also the perspective. It's got the perspective mount on here for the uh, for the live scope. I think you buy one through Garmin, but it costs like an extra hundred dollars for like this little bracket that you can only put in two positions, I think. But with the Summit perspective mount, you can it like you, you have free range to like angle it however you want. Yeah, you know, with this, you know, you can angle it. So you can freely angle it to whatever angle you want. And that's kind of handy depending on the depth of water you're in. I mean, I don't know how, the, how they do it with the regular Garmin, with the Garmin mount. With the Summit mount, there's more flexibility there. I haven't used it for ice fishing yet because uh, it's not really that useful for ice fishing. 
I'm trying to think what else is there the transducer positions so I've been I see like on the uh, on the groups and forums and stuff people talk about the orientation of the transducer they say it doesn't matter like I was saying you know the transducer shoots out three beams or whatever at at certain angles and people are saying it doesn't matter if you leave it in forward or down because on here you can change it there's like two different views kind of or well, I guess three if you count perspective but I'm not going to talk about perspective because I don't really use it for ice fishing once kayak season comes up though I'll probably be using it for that but for now I'm just going to talk about forward and down so I'll I'll roll the footage in the background because I took some b-roll earlier but uh, in the forward view is you know that's when your transducer is just perpendicular with the water or parallel or facing straight whatever so you're looking out in front of the boat and you know i see questions in the forums i've even talked to the garmin guy so and he confirmed and he confirmed this with me so this is forward view so you got your you know the top's flat and it's shooting out a certain direction so you know you're looking forward of course you want it to be pointing forward but people were talking about the orientation because there's a down view where you can look straight down but the mistake that they're doing is they're leaving it in forward view. So it's looking out like, you know, maybe kind of like this way, but they're switching the view on the unit, but leaving their transducer in the forward view. So they're basically losing, losing coverage back here because it, it shoots kind of like backwards a little bit like this. And they're saying they don't even bother turning their transducer. According to the Garmin guy and what I've suspected is that if you don't turn your transducer, it's shooting out a certain way, you're going to lose coverage. Every time I want to do down mode, they say one click, but I do two. I feel like it's going to shoot out, you know, like this because on the screen, it's going to be like a little triangle. And I feel like if you make this match it and the vi vice versa. So if you leave this pointing downwards and you switch the forward view on here, you're going to lose coverage because you're thinking you're looking out here, but in actuality, you're kind of like pointing down this way, if that makes sense. Well, I hope that gives you guys some insight onto my Garmin LiveScope setup. Uh, I know people are going to have questions. I just started putting out videos with me using this unit. Uh, the only thing is I cannot record the screen. Like going into it, I didn't even realize that certain units have screen recording, certain units have mirroring onto your phone, and this doesn't have either either of those. That's why, from the like the two videos I've shown so far, it's uh, it's a camera pointing at my unit. So that's why I do that. Uh, if I could record onto screen, I would. But one thing that Jay mentioned in his video, like I, I think he has the option to do it on his unit but he doesn't, it's because it's hard to sync up, you know, let's say that footage with what's going on here because there's no audio. But if he has a camera pointing at this, he can sync it up a lot easier. So he can go be like, test one, two, three, syncing audio. And then he can sync, you know, that audio cue from that or microphone here with what's being recorded on the screen. So I guess it's kind of, it kind of works out. Uh, the picture is not as clear but it's gonna be synced up and look a lot better. If you record hours of footage on here, oh man, it's gonna be such a pain in the ass trying to find that footage on here to match up with what's on the camera or whatever. So that's basically like the overview of uh, my unit and stuff. So I guess I'm gonna talk about my experience with it. This is not a plug and play. You can't just take it out, throw it in the water, push one button and expect everything to be working well. I'm guessing in most scenarios, that's okay, but there is always tinkering to do. There's uh, four different settings, four or five different settings that you always need to mess with. There's so many variables that can affect, you know, the clarity and the picture on this, that you're always tinkering with settings, whether that's like the gain, range, noise rejection. And there's this other gain called TVG, like time variable gain. So that's, it's kind of like it kind of varies i guess you know i haven't totally figured out all the settings but i feel like i'm pretty comfortable with um with setting it up but there are times where i'll throw down like a spoon or something and i'm like man i cannot see this spoon and depending on what side of tr the transducer that your lure is on let's say you know it's in the hole and then you got your lure down on this side it might see it better opposed to if you had it down on this side or if it's back here or if it's on this side so there's always a lot of tinkering 
Garmin is always doing updates. If you're in any of the Garmin groups, people are like super scared to update the unit. And I've heard all these horror stories of like, you know, people update their unit. Now they can't get the picture to be clear no matter what settings they try. They keep coming out with these updates and I think it'd be kind of pointless for them to keep updating it if the updates keep breaking stuff. Yeah, I get it. It happens. I keep my unit up to date. They keep adding features, like more uh, rejection settings and stuff to try to help clear up the picture. I think part of it could be user error. A lot of people, you know, they, they're they coming from flashers. It's, it's pretty simple. You just turn it on, push like one button and it's good to go. But with this, you gotta like, yeah, go through some menus, you know, change, change this, change that. That's the only downside of it. Well, that's not the only downside. The other downside is that it's big. You're not gonna be hole hopping a whole lot. You can, you know, compared to a flasher, flasher weighs what? Five, six pounds. So this whole unit here with this battery weighs 24 pounds. That's not including the pole. The pole probably weighs uh, maybe a couple pounds. So this thing's like 25, 26 pounds easy. Uh, I don't even take it out of my sled really, unless I'm gonna be in a shack and just sitting there fishing. And that's the only time I ever take it out of the sled. If I'm hole popping, I'm dragging my whole sled with me, which sounds kind of cumbersome, but it's kind of nice because that way I will always have all my stuff with me because everything's in the sled. Okay, this is not cheap. That's a big downside. Uh, if you bought it straight from Garmin with a Garmin bag, pole, granted it does come with a bigger screen, uh, it, I think it was like 2800 retail. Maybe they've dropped the price down by now. But if you piece things together, find sales, there was a rebate recently, you can save money through those means. Or if you got, you know, money to burn, just go out and buy everything at once right now. I think I pre pretty much covered everything that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure there's something I'm forgetting. Or if, if you have a certain question about, you know, live scope, the shuttle, the bag, the pole, whatever, anything to do with this whole setup here. Uh, just leave it down in the comments, let me know, and I'll, I'll try my best to answer it. We did a podcast with uh, a garment sales rep for the Midwest, uh, Danny, pretty cool guy. So I learned a lot from just talking with him, and there's, there's tons of resources out there too. Uh, I think you could contact Danny directly. Uh, I can't think of the, all the credentials in the top of my head. You know, join those, uh, Life scope groups. There's probably like five off the top of my head that I can think of. I like Garmin Life Scope Addicts. That's the one that Jason Young uh, runs. Uh, I, it was just like the first group I joined, and you know Jason knows his stuff. I always find myself going back to that page, but I'm pretty sure the other pages are good too. But yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to know, uh, drop it down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer it. If not, you know I'll try to reach out to to Danny, or you know you guys can reach out to Danny or Jason, join this group, whatever. There's tons of resources out there. I hope this video helps somebody. All right, so this is the moment that some of you guys have been waiting for. I teased this moment a few times on social media. I just wanna say thank you for the support. Uh, 1,000 subs is kind of small in the grand scheme of things, but 1,000 subs is way more than I had when I first started. I felt like it was kind of slow getting here, but you know, we're, we're here, so it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go straight into it, talk about the things I'm gonna give away. You know, Ma Pop Fishing and I work work together closely and we're, we're always about like small businesses and stuff. So we have some items here from some small businesses. You know, we'll just start out with the Ma Pop stuff. He's kind of the curator for these, uh, for these small mom and pop shops, hence the name Ma Pop Fishing. He's, he's the, actually the one that donated this stuff. I have something else over here. Don't worry, I'll get to it. But yeah, he's the one that donated all this stuff right here. So this face shield, my pop fishing face shield, this my pop fishing uh, long sleeve sports shirt thing. All right, so over here we have the fishing assault swim baits. That's kind of the collaboration between my pop fishing and fishing assault. So this color is exclusive to my pop fishing. It's a swim bait. Oh man, forgive me. I want to say it's like four and a half inches. But it's ribbed and it's got a paddle tail, so there's a lot of action in the water. For this next item, we're gonna talk about the Chasing Bass Custom Crankbaits. There we go. And then this one, we got a Blackwater Customs uh, Lipless Crank. Can we see? I'm sorry if you guys can't see it. So down here, we got uh, three flies from Aaron's Custom Tying. So we got this little ice jig, this bigger bucktail, and this, uh, 
but it looks like it'd be good for like panfish and stuff i got these two fishing kit stickers i don't sell these i ordered a whole bunch i thought i was gonna sell them but i feel like i'm better off just giving them away because uh, i'm not really in this to make money or anything and then yeah we got bear fish fanatics koozie for those that listen to our podcast should recognize this or I should say watch our podcast should recognize this just a koozie keep your drink cool big thanks to my pot fishing you know make sure you go like him on facebook because without his support i wouldn't be giving away all this stuff and then for the last item it is currently ice fishing season i'm gonna give away an ice fishing rod this is a sake fishing rod that he built for me uh, i have not used it very often there's nothing wrong with the rod it's just, I thought I was gonna be using it more. I like catching big fish, and this rod isn't necessarily designed for targeting big fish. You could catch big fish on it, but it's more of a pan fish rod. And it's kind of like a, uh, if you guys know what the, the JT pan fish snare is. So it's kind of like a, a dead stick rod, which is like super sensitive. Uh, we'll just pretend there's a reel on here, but on the tip here, the spring bobber and already you could tell like look how sensitive this is like i just touch it and it just it's bouncing all over the place look still bouncing still bouncing so it's super sensitive it would be great for dead sticking for panfish and stuff uh, it's gonna be super sensitive like i just showed you guys but one little tap and that thing's gonna be dancing all over the place so you get to detect bites really easily with it yeah, I just found myself not using it as much as I thought I would because I don't dead stick a whole bunch. Cause I, I like jigging, you know, I'm, I'm all about the jigging. If you guys watch my videos, I'm always jigging. Like jigging spoons, tungstens. And with this, it doesn't really fit my style. It could easily fit anybody else's style. You know, you just have a dead stick set to, set to the side. If you are remotely interested in any of this stuff and want to win this stuff, all you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave in the comments, what are what are your goals for this year? It's still early in the year, 2021. Yeah, I just, I just wanna hear what some of my subscribers' goals are. You know, my goals for this year is to keep making videos consistently. You know, if I could push out one fishing video a week, one podcast a week, maybe even more fishing videos a week, or maybe do like a offshoot video, like talk about my gear or or I don't know, just more videos, I suppose. More videos, more fishing, more traveling, meeting more people, just basically what I'm already doing, but just taking it to the next level. This giveaway is gonna run through February 20th at 11.59 p.m. So any comments up until that point are gonna be entered into the giveaway. And then on Wednesday, February 24th, I'll announce the winner. So good luck, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment. So if you guys wanna see more of these type of videos where it's just not strictly fishing and more of a, like a breakdown or overview, maybe review of the stuff I use all the time, let me know down in the comments and uh, hit that subscribe button. You know, Subscribing is free, helps me reach a bigger audience and gives me motivation to keep making videos.